feels like a long time. Yeah, it does. It? It's a, I don't know if it's just, I know it's a bye week, but uh, it was, if it's that extra Friday deal from the, I don't know, it feels like quite a while. How's practice today? I think it was good. You know, we're getting some good energy. Uh, scout teams were particularly good, I thought, in giving us the looks that we need to see. You've been doing pretty well uh, on the road this season, obviously, and night games on the road, late starts. Well, you know, we have no control over either one of those things, so it's just best that you just prepare. And, and we have we had a, a good experience on the road, so hopefully that's helpful. Mike six. No, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to stick with my original deal. I understand the night games. I, I just, you know, two in a row on the road, I think that's what they've got to look at in the future. We're going to have, this is going to be our world for a long time, and it's going to get different. I think Thursday, Friday, Saturday games are all in the making for sure. We're already doing that. Who knows what we will yet see. You guys might have to go with us to China one day. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about uh, Utah's ability to slow down ASU last week? Uh, what formula did they have? They have a good defense. You know, and it, you can look at the stats now in the conference and and uh, and look at the teams that have good defenses just statistically, and you'll you'll see teams that will be in games. And that, that's that's it. That's the common denominator. If you have a good defense, you can be in every game, and, and uh, Utah has an outstanding defense. Healthy, Mike. Mike. You got DJ back, some other. Players. We're healthier. You know, we've got some issues still. Zach Robinson got hurt evidently on Thursday's practice, and uh, he's not practicing yet. So we'll see if he can play this week. And we got some guys that are healthier for sure. Mike uh, Taylor Kelly. Uh, how much better is he this, this time? He's a typical deal of growth from playing for a whole year. And, I, and he was awfully good last year. You know, he had a great year. And, and uh, he's just a good all-around good quarterback. He's got a lot of football savvy. He's got a lot of stuff, that kid. So uh, he's good. He's just good. And Grice has really uh, assumed, taken hold of that number one spot after Marshall leaving the back to Marion Grice. What makes him good? Uh, boy, he's a reliable player, and he's he's got good running ability, good size, and uh, he's taking good care of the football. His, his pro productivity is very good. Mike, after the Oregon Stanford game the other night, did you watch it? What did you think? I uh, I didn't get to watch. I was traveling, so I saw part of it, and then I saw part of it, and, and uh, it was a great it was a great game. It was I, I would say if. Uh, if I could, if you can describe a prototype team winning the way they win, it was a prototype Stanford game. You know, physical on offense, running the ball. I mean, you don't see very many games in college football anymore where a team throws 13 passes. That's that's very unusual. And then uh, again, I will say this again: look at the stats, and Stanford is a great defensive team. They're going to be in every game that they play because of that. So. Well, Lots of talk following that game about getting big linemen on both sides of the ball. How do you do it? There's so few to choose from. Yes. Right? Is yes. that part of the issue? Everybody, recruiting? everybody knows all that about recruiting, and uh, you know, it's it, and it's not just size. It's not. That's really uh, generalizing it way too much. It's good players, uh, and so big, good players are good. You talk about those defensive tackles being gold. I mean, there aren't that many guys like that around. No, no, they're they're uh, you know like recruiting linemen are gold, both sides of the ball, and we everybody in America tries to do it. And if you can't find them ready made, then you have to do a good job of projecting them. And and uh, it's it's always a, a big issue. And and you know it's uh, the other the other thing is that those guys are Stanford's defense is old. I mean, they're, they're, they're talented, they're good size and physical, and they're experienced. They've been, they played probably four years of football, you know, eight seniors, I think, out of the top 12 defenders. So, As Mike, you've played both of them, Mike, how do you, USC Stanford this weekend? Yeah, what I think it's a great game. I think it is a great game. I think you're talking about two great defenses, and, and SC's coming alive, so. It would be interesting. Um, Mike Grimble told me when he got here that if he had come here initially in recruiting, if he had made a visit, because you guys were kind of in the mix with him when he first yeah. committed, that he thinks he would have he would have picked this place because he loved it here. 
Is that a struggle that you guys had, just getting guys You try to get campus? a visit. You try to get a visit. You know, and a guy like him, he's got multiple offers, lots of choices, and only five visits he can take. So you try to get in those five. That's, that's our, that's what we try to do. Mike, Will Sutton, it seems like in order, he obviously is a dynamic player, but they like to get him ISO'd a lot. Is that what makes him so effective, or what does their defense do well that allows him to be so disruptive? Well, he's a, another individual talent that's very good. He plays a three technique position, which puts you on an island outside the guard, and uh, you know that that's what they try to do is they try to find any way they can to get him one-on-one, -on -one, and then he's just tough.